Fernando Alonso is becoming increasingly familiar with American motorsport as he turns his attentions away from Formula One and towards his quest to win the Indy 500. He's obviously tried Indy cars, he's competed at the Daytona 24 hours, uh, and recently uh, he tried his hand at NASCAR, swapping cars with seven-time Sprint Cup champion Jimmy Johnson. Alonso drove a 2018 road course spec Chevrolet NASCAR and Johnson drove a 2013 McLaren F1 car complete with uh, V8 screaming V8 engine. Let's find out how both of them got on and what the crew chiefs made of their performances. I mean, everything was so different. Um, you know, just finding the limit of the brakes and honestly the high speed corners. The acceleration was impressive, um, but not too far off our cars when they're really hooked up off the turn. But the braking is just insane. I mean, you hit the brakes and you literally lose your vision at max uh, G-forces, it's so high. And at the end of the braking zone, your vision comes back and your eyes focus and you can see the, the corner. Um, and then from there, the high speed corners, it took me a while to kind of work my way into that. The lateral G-forces are so high that you know, I, I just didn't want to make a mistake and do something bad. Um, so I kept working my way into that. And I still think I left a little time on the table there, but to finish the day, two tenths off of Fernando's time, and, and that F1 car is, uh, I think, a job well done. Yeah, it was definitely a lifetime, lifetime experience. You know, these cars, they, they feel very different compared to the, the single seaters, the Formula One, but uh, a lot of fun, you know, out there in the, in the racetrack and uh, very powerful cars. Uh, uh, sliding around, very uh, little grip, so you know it feels uh, amazing to drive. I had a lot of fun, uh, also following uh, uh, Jimmy's uh, progress, and uh, you know it was a wonderful day. So really, really thank you to to McLaren, uh, and to Henry Motorsport, and uh, all the sponsors. Yeah, it's been really interesting to see Jimmy first in the simulator when we were with him on Wednesday, just seeing how he was progressing, what areas of his driving he needed to adapt to driving a Formula One car. It was mainly braking and high speed, getting that right. And then sure enough, we got to the track and that training in the simulator, I think, really helped him because he kind of was prepared for the habits that wouldn't work in a Formula One car. And today, you know, we were able to straight away get out there and he drove and he was remembering a lot of the things he was doing in the simulator and you know, we're driving pretty well and it was just a case of progressing and getting used to how late he could brake, how much speed he could carry through the high speed corners, really using all of the downforce. Let's speak to two more people who were present at that test. I'm joined by Jonathan Noble and James Roberts. You both went to Bahrain to witness this car swap. Johnson was saying that he got within two tenths of a second of Alonso's lap time in the F1 car. He was uh, very impressive and very happy with that performance. Mm. Uh, so how was he able to get so close? Uh... Preparation, I mean, he did a whole day in the simulator. I think he had a six hour stint working through it, um, quick adjustment. But I think even so, you know, first day in a single seater, he's not driven a single seater on a road course. Uh, he's Ever. Explaining, never. He explained to us he drove a off-road buggy um, nearly 20 years ago. <laughs> and that's it. Since then, it's been uh, NASCAR and um, stock cars. So for a first appearance, I think it was phenomenal. And I think what was also interesting was this wasn't a, a car swap just for promo, just for some photos. No. We've seen in the past, you know, two drivers top up, do three laps in each car's, handshakes, Thank disappear you very off. Much. This yeah. was a proper, proper orchestrated programme, clear programme, new tyres, old tyres, proper runs, proper lap times. Um, and I think for Johnson to have done that on his first day was a great, great performance. What was the reasoning behind doing such a serious performance run? Were they trying to evaluate Johnson? Because as you say, it's quite unusual for them to dedicate so much resource to it. I think if they had the, you've got two great world champions, you know, Fernando had pushed for this since he went to the NASCAR race and saw Jimmy. They both wanted it to happen. Um, they managed to arrange a, a date and a location. And I think if, if you've made the effort to fly a NASCAR over, you've got your F1 car, you've got these two guys, at least do it properly. I mean, there's no point be almost zero point of d doing it if it's just for a few photographs. So they wanted to see what was possible and I think it's opened a few questions about, you know, do we now have American drivers who can make that transition? I think Johnson may be too old, but it mm. shows that, you know, a good, highly talented racing driver who can win on ovals, surely has got the talent that can transfer across if he can get the mileage and the tyres and the car and the laps to do it. Mm. Is that, is that, would you agree with that, Jimmy? I mean, uh, Jimmy Johnson, not Roberts, <laughs> uh, he was saying that, you know, adjusting to the performance of that kind of car, particularly under braking, I think the acceleration was quite similar coming out to a top level NASCAR, but the other areas were quite alien. Do you think that it's just the opportunity for American stock car drivers that's lacking or 
Is it, is it, is it going to be difficult for them to transfer across? We asked him that evening because I said to him, was driving a Formula One car a, a lifelong ambition? And, and he said it was. And he said he grew up in South California where his whole interest was single-seaters, IndyCar and Formula One. But he realised if he wanted to make um, a career of it in America, he had to go to NASCAR and he had to move to, to North Carolina and Charlotte. And, and that's, so, so that's what he did. Mm. I think when it, when it came to the day, I think you're right. Jimmy was very, was very serious about mm. the whole operation. After his first run, he was getting significant helmet lift because the helmet they have in, in NASCAR is a, is a size or two uh, a little bit bigger because they because they're obviously in an enclosed cockpit. Yeah. So he was getting lift and the helmet was coming right up um, on the back straight. So they got some extra padding to, to bring it down. But when, the moment he got out of the car, he was immediately with Mark Temple, his engineer, trying to work out these these little details. Whereas in contrast, Fernando in the Cup car, Eve was just absolutely loving it. He he found that it was. Because it's twice as heavy as a Formula One car, I think it's about 3,300 pounds or something like that. Twice as heavy, so he found it very, very difficult, in, uh, the retardation coming in on, on the brakes into certain corners, particularly that tricky turn 10, because the front of the car is so heavy. It must have taken an age for it to slow down. <laughs> <as well. laughs> I think he described it as uh, trying to um, stop a 747, so it was a very, very tricky car. And also in a stop-start circuit like Bahrain, it doesn't have the same, the same magic as, say, a, a high-speed oval was, and that's what... Johnson said to him next, that's what you want to try. You want to, you want to try one of these on an oval. So for him, it was much more about getting the rear out, um, sliding the car around. Showboating. Showboating. <laughs> but he was also quick. They, he was quicker than Johnson's benchmark time from the morning. So it just showed how brilliant both of them were that they could adapt so quickly. And John, what do you, what do you make of uh, Alonso's participation? So he was quick in the car. As Jimmy mentioned, he hasn't tried on an oval. Do we think he'll try his hand again at NASCAR? Will he add... NASCAR to his American Odyssey, or was this very much a one-off? I think if you look, if you watch the, the videos, listen to what he said earlier on, he said this was great fun, and I think that's what it was. It was a day of fun for him, where he was sliding the car, didn't have the right tyres on, wasn't really the ideal track. But it's also quite telling that when, when we spoke to him at the end of the day, he said, you know, is this whetted your appetite? Are you desperate to do it again? Or Natural this, question, is this, isn't it? Is this a one-off? He just smiled and said, I think it's a one-off. So I think it, it didn't give him the, the passion and the the cutting edge technology and that being at the limit feeling that he gets from Formula One and sports cars. I think he's still very much a driver at the top of his game. He doesn't want to go and commit to anything just for fun. He wants to commit for you know, success, commit because it challenges him, pushes him on further. So I think NASCAR for now, you know, maybe a road course event in next year or the year after when he's finished the Indy adventure and finished with sports cars, but the season's over and he's got to think, what do I do next? Don't rule out a road course one-off, but that would be it. He's not going to do a full season. Um, I think he needs to be something a bit, bit more. I mean, it could even be Formula One. 